Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another Hammer Productions Night. Tonight, I will be reviewing Yesterday's Enemy, released in 1959. Directed by Val Guest, from a script by Peter R. Newman. Starring Stanley Baker, Guy Rolfe, Leo McKern, Gordon Jackson, David Oxley, Richard Pascoe, Philip Ah, Percy Herbert, and Wolf Morris. Now, Hammer, I gotta give them a lot of credit. I mean, in a lot of their films that they did, they took on controversial ideas, especially for the time. I mean, this was 1959 when this one was made. And some of the elements that they put in this, most war movies wouldn't touch that. The character Stanley Baker plays with Captain Alan Langford is not very liked by his men because he is very dominant and very commanding, which is a, a sign of a pretty good leader, in my opinion. Of course, that doesn't always translate well to... The men because the men think that he's too demanding and when it comes to one point in this film he shows that he is willing to completely go against the Geneva Convention and kill innocents to get what he wants and that's exactly what he does here he takes two villagers that they find in this um, Japanese village, when an informant won't talk, he takes two of the villagers up there and uh, orders his men to have them shot. A and before this even happens, um, Guy Rolfe's character of this preacher that Alan calls Padre, and the war correspondent that is going along with them, Leo McKern's character of Max. They show their total disapproval of what he's attempting to do here. And of course, Max, um, being a war correspondent, says, I'm going to report on this. If you do this, I'm going to tell everybody. He doesn't listen, though, still. And he orders his men to have these two villagers shot. But it turns out that the informant, Wolf Morris, probably didn't even care about those two villagers. Um, and it wasn't until he's put in front of the firing squad himself to be shot that he finally gives in to Langford's demands. Now, as I'm watching this, I can't help but be intrigued by... Stanley Baker's character. He takes this completely difficult role to play, playing such a hard ass and such a um, controversial character. And though he doesn't play him to where he makes him fully likable, he plays him in a way that you look at his performance and you just know that Stanley Baker is one hell of an actor because he makes you feel throughout all of that. Um, another thing this film does, um, in my opinion, much better than the previous film that I reviewed on this channel called The Camp on Blood Island. And uh, I think this one does a better representation of the Japanese during World War II. Um, like I said in my review for Camp on Blood Island, it really went stereotypical with the, you know, Asian stereotype shit in there. And it's not necessary to do that. And it's not necessary to cast you know, English or American actors to play the Asian characters. 
This film does that right with a American actor, but he's of Korean descent, with Philip An playing Yamazaki. And his performance in here is excellent. He is so good in this role. You look at him and you feel that you can, even though he's very questionable, just like Langford, you can actually respect what he's going for, what he's saying in here as a commanding officer of his um, army in here. And as you can see on the image behind me, it says war is hell. And that is an accurate description of what Val Guest shows in this film as a director. And his actors in this are phenomenal. Like I said, Stanley Baker is the big standout, but also you got Guy Rolfe, Leo McKern, Gordon Jackson is excellent as Sergeant McKenzie. And Richard Pascal was completely unrecognizable as uh, Second Lieutenant Hastings. Um, I had to do a second look. I saw his name on the credits, but I, as soon as, you know, um, he first came on, I didn't recognize him right away. It, it took um, a few little close-ups showing him to where I finally went, Oh, shit. It's Richard Pascal. Um, so... A uh, very great early performance for him in this. And um, like I said, the Japanese with Philip Ahn's performance as uh, Yamazaki is just great. And the, and the Japanese are portrayed, you know, because this is taken in Burma, around Burma, in where the Japanese would know how to attack and use the terrain to their advantage. And that is shown in this film quite a bit where the Japanese stealthily take out several soldiers. And um, it, it is, you know, it's, it's hard to watch that as an American, um, watching that happen to these Americans, or in this case, British soldiers. But they did not completely make them a stereotype and make them, you know, just horrible soldiers to where they, you know, they're not that good, you know, and the, the you know, the British just completely outclass them on screen here and everything. It, it feels like a real, authentic World War II story here because both sides are portrayed very well in this film. So, my final review of Yesterday's Enemy, released in 1959. I am going to give this film a 9.8 out of 10. This film is excellent. It is supremely well done by Hammer. If you have not seen it, I implore you to seek it out and watch it. But have you seen it? And if you have, what do you think of it? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in those comments down below. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified about future videos just like this one. And while you're by the subscribe button, click that join button and become a Dark Knight fan. As a Dark Knight fan, you have the option to submit a movie, TV show, or a ranking video of your choosing for me to do on this channel. And when I do that video, it will go live on the plus area for all plus members to view. Um, so if you want to get interactive and help me to get some extra reviews out here, you know, now's the time. Well, that's it for another Hammer Productions Night. If you missed last week's Hammer Productions Night, check out the link up here to 
get caught up on that one. Or if you missed any of the other Hammer Productions tonight, be sure and check out the playlist right here to get caught up on any of them that you have missed.